Oh boy, it's a big one today. One second, one second. everyone welcome back to another pokemon legends arceus stream stream 20 uh hit the big 2-0 but yeah uh i don't know if today's gonna be the last one or if to or like the next one's gonna be but we're getting close i think we've only got like five pokemon left besides arceus himself and obviously we already did all the, all the main stuff for the game so, pretty much at this point, our, our last objective is literally catch them all. Now, I think I'm going to do things a little bit differently this stream, where usually I save the more grindy stuff for the end, but I, I don't know how long those fossil boys are going to take us to get. What I'm going to do is I'm going to start by going to the Crimson Mirelands. Uh, I'm going to get those last two wisps and get those knocked out of the way first thing. Because we've only got two of those left and there's no caves there. So it shouldn't take us as long as it has been taking us. Uh, let me go ahead and grab a map really quick. Wisps. Map. Hopefully we can go ahead and knock out Spiritomb really quick. Yeah. Okay. So that's going to be our first objective today. Set that off to the side. That works. Let me make sure everything's working right. Okay, cool. Uh, to the skies. Oh, this isn't a good map. This doesn't have numbers on it. One second. That one just has numbers. Okay, I'm going to go with that one. Okay, so there's only two wisps left here. I'm just gonna quickly go through them. We also want to pick up Satchel at some point because we just need 30 more merit points and then we can evolve uh, Sneasler, who's one of the five we're missing. This is a weird area. You just kind of go to an invisible wall. That's really bizarre. Oh right, I probably wanted to be night. That that was a mistake. Okay. Where's the nearest camp? Oh right, where we came from. The sun stands in the way of our progress, so get rid of it. Yeah, it seems like more or less uh, all the wisps for this area are either clustered up here somewhere, or they're just like in a ring around this area. Yeah, so that's the two fossil Pokemon that I never remember the name of. Uh, Sneasler, uh, Spiritomb, Giratina. I guess just Arceus himself after that. 
Unless I'm missing some. Not gonna lie, kind of concerned about the fossil Pokemon. That you can only get in Coronet Highlands only from time warps. I'd like to believe that we can get one Pokemon per per hour if I'm gonna stream for like five hours. Let, let's let's see how that works out. Okay, this other one is like right above, like in here somewhere amongst the trees. Yes. Or the, the red crinidos. Yeah. Out of the way, crow. Oh, that's a very angry thing. Uh, okay. So I got this one already. So I can just fly away. Uh... Shield on? Why did it just... Why did it just make me jump off the... Yeah, I didn't. I, I haven't figured out what's wrong with my controller yet, but uh, clearly there's something wrong with the D-pad. So that's uh, that's a way to start our stream. What is what is that? Is that the sun? Ew! Get rid of it. So it's like kind of a risk to use Braviary now because at any point in time I could just spontaneously get on Weird Ear or something instead and just fall out of the sky. Actually, if that happens, I should probably know what, which way to do this. So if that happens again... Okay, I just need to immediately do D-pad left. And I should be fine. Yeah, evolutions? Yeah, there's quite a few of them. It's such a crazy thought that we're probably going to get, like, over a thousand Pokémon by the time we get through Gen 9. I wonder if they're going to add, like, more evolutions to, like, older Pokémon. Okay, so three is just like out here on this ledge, like somewhere around in here. Maybe it's up here? No? Okay. Gonna mark that one out. Yeah, I love that this area doesn't have caves. Why did you Okay, that was that was totally my bad. I uh <laughs> accidentally did a spontaneous tuck and roll off the side of that hip out of the mountain. Fixed it. Okay, there might be one down here.
Yeah. Uh, involuntarily fancy. Looks like this one's, like, right below the text for Diamond Settlement. Actually, while we're in the area, are there any... There is a satchel up there. We only need one. I might go ahead and grab that before I fast travel. I feel like I was pretty good about collecting wisps here. I feel like it's probably going to be just somewhere way out on the edge somewhere. How long have you been parked out here? Less likely to hit when used in foggy conditions. I had no idea that that was actually, uh, I guess it makes sense that that would affect things. I mean, weather's been a thing before in Pokemon games, but I didn't know it was in this game. There isn't, like, a wisp hiding behind one of the diamond tents, is there? Yeah, I think there's something wrong with the Pearl Clan. Like, the Diamond people had the sense to, you know... Uh, I just got distracted by the fact that there's an unknown hiding behind that tent. Uh... Basically, why does the Pearl Clan live in, like, the ice area? These guys had the sense to, you know, be in a nice, decent weather area next to a lake. But, uh, more interesting things. A. Well, that's not a wisp, but I'll take it anyway. Okay, I don't think they, they... I think that's the one thing that they hid, hid behind a tent here. A lot of these are really easy to miss. I feel like there's some of them that are, are placed just so. In, in, in such a way that you could... You could literally be looking straight at them and not realize that they're there. Okay, let's try this one. Okay, no, I definitely got this one already. Alright, before I fast travel out of here, I'm going to go grab the satchel. Because all the rest of them are south of here. Like the potential wisp locations. If I can just get one, then that'll give us enough merit points for sure for Sneasler. Here it is. Got it. Is that another shiny? Oh wait, <laughs> that was my own Pokemon. <laughs> I'm so dumb. I thought that was another shiny, uh, weird ear. Please no.
All right. But that does bring us. Oh, we got a hundred merit points. I didn't you know. I didn't even know you could get that many. But yeah, that puts us over fourteen hundred, which means we can get the item we need for an actual sneezer you can use on your team, and a missing Pokedex entry along with it. So now it's just the wisps here. Somewhere around here, perhaps? There's a lot of these little tiny ledges. It seems like they really like putting most of them on those. Okay, I'm going to say it's not that one. I should probably check. The little message at the bottom of the unknown. You deciphered it. Me. Oh, in the decks. Oh. Yeah, you can kind of make it out. A lone tree, a pond in the... Something. A pond on the... Shore? Maybe there's like a different one in each area. Or... Oh, oh, there's a different one for each unknown. Oh no, I just realized what this is. These are hints at where the unknown are. Like, the A was on a tent, right? Within the settlement where... Time rules. And it was on the back of a tent. In the diamond camp. I had no idea that was even there till now. Thank you for uh, drawing my attention there. I would have probably never realized. The game's been telling us where they are this whole time. Wither tree on the sprawling red swamp. Okay, it's definitely here somewhere. Oh, is it talking about the one that was on the stump? I remember collecting one from a stump near like a like a campfire or something. Wait, that might be a completely different area. I can't remember if that was here or if that was in uh Obsidian Fieldlands.
Yeah, that was one of the, one of the first unknown I saw, and I was like really confused. Like, what was he doing there? He's just standing there menacingly. Okay, I think I got to this spot just a little too late. Yeah, I, I still don't don't know what the the unknown are actually up to. If they have some sort of secret objective or something, hiding out everywhere. Because I mean, I mean, they are Pokemon. They are alive, and they're just hanging out, I guess. Like, it'd be weird if they, they did that with literally any other Pokémon. <laughs> just have, like, a bunch of Pikachus with numbers on them that are just, uh, T-posed in random spots around the map. Might be one in this. Uh, what was it? Cotton Sedge Prairie. Okay. Oh, this looks suspicious. Not those kind of wisps. Okay, I don't think it's here. Yeah, ghastly outbreak. Yep, there's one that was just on the outskirts. That means that there's not only one wisp, one, one wisp remaining in this area, but one wisp left total. There's one just this side of this lake, potentially. So nearly free from this. Oh, we get immediately lucky with the second one, the second location we check is the other one. Nice. We finally did it. 107 wisps they added to the game. And we found them all, uh, with a little help from uh, the internet. But if I didn't, it would have taken us probably like a couple months more. Get rid of that map, don't need that anymore. I wonder if Spirit Tomb is actually any good like competitively. I know that uh, 
Cynthia has a uh, Spirit Tomb, where you fight her in Brilliant Diamond. Probably regular Diamond as well. I never got that far though. So they must be pretty good. I'm so excited finally being able to turn this in. So I wonder what happens now. Because we got like the... The uh... This little stone thing, odd keystone, which is clearly like the rock part of Spear Tomb. Does it just kind of pop out? Since you've now gathered five wisps, oh, that she actually had rewards this entire time for when you when you when you gather a certain number of wisps. We're about to get a lot of presents. Oval stone, rare candy, seat of mastery, dusk stone. <laughs> uh, so I was supposed to check in with her. To be fair, I don't think she said anything about it. They did have an oval stone and a reaper cloth, so theoretically, if someone was trying to speedrun the game, they wouldn't need to buy those if they're going to do this quest anyway. I can finally seal away that havoc wrecking bundle of mischief once more. Uh, what? Shrouded ruins. Meet there at the same time of day as when we first met. What? Oh, it tells you at night. Just like, I hope you remember. And then both the name of the quest. Yeah, apparently. I'm gonna put some inventory stuff away really quick though. As usual, picking up every object we see. Guess we'll be going to the Meyerlands once, once more. Yeah, I could have swore it was in like Coronet Highlands. Like near the ruins or something. But apparently not. I 
wonder if we actually fight them or if the game's just like, okay, you, you've done enough. over here. All right, because there's more ruins over over this way. Totally forgot they were here. Confession. There's actually 108 of them. You better have the last one. Okay. We survive for now. Uh, who are you? After this, the traveler who used that strange magic will finally forgive me. Oh, right. I remember, like, I was like, oh, they're talking about stealing stuff away, and I went on a whole tangent about, like, magic being a thing in Pokemon. Now they're just straight up talking about travelers using magic. Why would you do this? Why would you close your eyes in front of the random stranger who's being suspicious? So is she like a ghost the whole time or something? We did get the radishes though, so we're all good. Wait. Oh, there they are. The only spirit tube in the game. AKA, the reason I, ha I had to catch them is because obviously you've got to catch them all to go after Arceus. At least they didn't make it much harder than they needed to. They wanted to be caught. So glad we finally have that key item slot freed up. There's just, uh, not a lot of space here. Alright, well, uh, I guess with that... Get the heck out of here. Am 
And whenever we go back, when we go back to the village, okay, now, uh, okay, first off, I want to check to see if we've got any more appliances for the last Rotom. Did you rotate a stock? Nope. Then we want to get the item for Sneasel. Minus 1400. We'll go ahead and do that. So we can have the combat ready, climby boy. Where is he? I'm gonna, I'm gonna uh, at least look at this. What is this even supposed to be? I don't understand. Do I have an Alpha Sneasel? Is this technically, like, potentially the last evolution of the game? Unless you make the fossil guys evolve. I don't know if I have an Alpha Sneasel. That's so weird that there's regular Sneasel and Alpha Sneasel, but he's like the only Pokemon like that. I mean, I can't think of any others. Where there's like a... Kisuian version and the regular version in the same... Like, both in the game. Alright, Sneasel, it's your lucky day. Wait. Incompatible. Uh. No, regular Sneasel turns into, uh, Sneasel's normal evolution. I think it specifically has to be Hisuian Sneasel to get Sneasler. But I thought the same item worked for, for both of them. Hold on a second. Google, don't fail me now. Uh, how do you get him? I have the Razor Claw. Yeah, that's the correct item.
Uh, you need a razor claw. Oh, I think it's just a time of day thing. If you want to evolve, sneeze on the Weavile. Okay, so if you use it on Sneasel at night, you get Weavile. If you use it on Sneasler, or use it on Sneasel during the day, then you get Sneasler. Okay, I get it now. I'm starting to get worried that I just spent like all the merit points on the wrong thing. Right till the middle of the day. Well, that was kind of weird how it just like kind of faded to light and like a short period of time instead of just suddenly being daylight. Weird. Okay, now he's compatible. One Sneasler. Now, I don't know if the fossil guys evolve or not. I'm hoping they do, so I only need to get one of them to evolve it. But if, if not, and I have to catch them separately, that might have been the last evolution of the game. I might be missing a couple. That math isn't adding up. Yeah, I had no idea. Apparently, they're poison fighting type. Very unique combination there. Cranitos, Rampardos? Okay. That's really good. Because that means we only need the Cranitos then. Which will be our next objective. The last grindy thing of the game. Where did I put my other shiny at? I I set you down here somewhere. Yeah, I got heat ran. Heat ran. Heat ran. Set you down in here somewhere. Lost in the Pokemon box. All right, it was the the one that turns into Kudra. I 
forgot what Pokemon I was looking for. There's so many of them. Yeah, it's the shiny Sligu. I'm trying to keep like as many shinies on my team as possible. I want them to get the experience. There it is. It's just uh, kind of like camouflaged up here. Okay, so that's a little stamp of approval next to four out of five areas. For some reason, not next to Crimson Mirelands, though. That's really weird. I'm assuming that's going to be Arceus. 238 there. Wait. If one of those is going to be Arceus, then what's the other one? And these two are the uh, Granitos and Rampardos. Just need to turn Sneasler in. Oh, that's probably part of it, is that it hasn't uh, updated the numbers, because you have to report to the professor to get the numbers to go back up. I'm not sure what the best way to go about this is, other than to just kind of go for it. So apparently the only place you can get Cranitos and Repardos is from like the time warp, time rift things. And only in Coronet Highlands. I've noticed that a lot of the areas I've been in uh, it seems like the game doesn't really want to make the uh, time rift things appear. If I just like fast travel and fly around. So I'm gonna just like go around and like try and collect resources and hopefully the game will be like, okay, you're spending enough time here, uh, make the time rift happen. Really? We had like a significant level advantage there. And so I'm not going to feel bad about this. Yeah, I'm not quite sure if there's a way to speed up, like, the time rifts opening. Uh, I'm assuming the game won't let you just do that if you catch Giratina or something. But it is just a, a thing that happens at random.
Yeah, I think I'm just gonna basically not use fast travel for a while. I like sp speed up time. Hopefully that'll encourage the game to uh, produce more time rifts. I need to grab these satchels while we're here at least. Maybe we'll get some of ours back. and Rampardos. That's the one that I'm like worried about the most for today. I don't know how often the time rifts open. This kind of feels like an area that you'd see in Breath of the Wild. Actually, I think I might look up what those other numbers are just to see if I can be working on them while I'm doing this. I'm just worried I'm like I'm like missing one. Arceus uh two thirty four Wait what? I am missing one. That's a Pokemon I didn't know, know exists. And he's in uh, the Meyerlands. Which is why there's no stamp next to it. Is it part of a quest or did you just get that? That's so bizarre. Oh right, we haven't turned that in yet. Okay, I think I, I found something we can work on while we're uh, waiting for time to split. I want to go work on the Pokedex entries for... Thunderous, Landorus, and the other guy. Apparently there's a fourth one that I didn't know about. That's in the Crimson in the swamp area. Let's not release them. Yeah, there's a fourth one of these guys.
Which one? Enamorous? Specifically found in uh, which area are they found in here? Scarlet Bog, Crimson Mirelands, Sacrum. I have no idea. I'm assuming that that's the reason why I don't have the little red stamp next to Crimson Mirelands, though. Should I report everything to the professor? I'm gonna make sure he's got all of our stuff up to date here. I don't know if you get Sacrum. I don't see an empty spot for him. So many Pokemon. Also kind of making sure I didn't miss any. We're at 237 caught out of 238C and I'm assuming the last one is going to be Giratina. So, 238, 239. 240, 241, and this guy will be 242. I don't know if we actually need to turn in the quest, though, to see... The, uh, the fourth one. So I'm going to go ahead and put Tornadus, Thunderous, and Landorus in our party. Because we actually need complete Pokedex entries to turn that one in. So basically pull them into our party and have them spam moves on everything. Which we can conveniently do while we wait for a time warp to appear. Here's the orange one. Okay, so he's got like the... I guess we just go through them one at a time. They're pretty much on the same level. Extra sensory and bleak windstorm for tornadoes. Seems like all of them, it, it has like a, a thing for both strong style and agile style moves. Does he have the moves we need? Yes. Currently the first and the last one. So, uh, I feel sorry for the Pokemon in this area because we're going to be spamming those on everything. Rip. To be fair, this sh shouldn't take too long. But at the same time, it's like... I 
I kind of want it to take a little while, so we've got something to do while we wait for time to rip. Is that ice type? Neat. Yeah, those checkboxes are going to fill up pretty quick. Oh, it's, it's flying. Fortunately, it seems like we do have a pretty significant level advantage here. Yeah, just a little bit. A slight level advantage. I wonder why they decided to make Frostbite a thing. It kind of just feels like... Basically, just another burner poison, but now it's Ice-type instead. Is that for like balance reasons? Like they're like, oh, maybe we can make it happen more often if it isn't like, because it's like frozen is like a really good status effect to get or to be able to cause, but it's like the least likely between paralysis and sleep and freezing. So maybe they just changed that for the uh, sake of balance. Also, I know apparently these guys can change forms, but I don't know how you go about doing that. I'm assuming maybe some sort of item, maybe a quest reward for uh, pulling out their Pokedex entries. Trying to switch back and forth between Agile and Strong Style moves. Kinda double dip on those. That might be enough. I'm gonna go see where we're at. Actually, since this guy's right here. Spent our whole game in fear of the Zapcats. My, how the tables have turned.
Okay, he's at 10. So that's all it takes. So you don't need them anymore. Okay, Thunderous. What does Thunderous need? Wait, what? Oh, someone found one of our lost satchels. Nice. I wonder how the game decides, like, whose satchel to, to put in whose game. Like, is there, like, a queue? Probably. Extrasensory Wild Bolt Storm. Strong national moves. Does he have those? Yes. So he's like the electric one. So I'm assuming Landris is the fire one. Not the situation you want to be a bat in. I don't know what game these guys are from. This is. They're very weird Pokemon designs. Bad crit. Wait, I don't have any healing items. Uh, hey, let's switch over to this guy for a second. It's like ground type. I'm sure it's gonna be extra sensory and then the move with the storm in the name. Yeah, I don't know if the like the fourth uh, guy sitting on a cloud is out there right now, or if we have to turn in this quest before he spawns in. Can't help but notice that not a single time rift is open. Somewhere around the volcano? Yes, I think I found that one. If you like climb up like the opposite side of the volcano, like from where the opening is, like as, as high as you can go, I think that's where you see him. If I remember correctly.
probably switch to the Landorus for these guys. Yeah, I gotta admit it. When it comes to these Cloud guys, I kind of feel a little bit out of the loop because I didn't play the game that they're from. I'm pretty sure Landorus is... is like, very popular for, like, competitive Pokemon, though. It's, like, the only place I really know him from. Landorus T. Actually, making more progress with the Landers than we are with the Thunders. Wait, there's fish Pokemon here. Let's go fix that. I still don't think the game explains very well what happened between, like, modern Pokemon times and, like, the events of this game. Like, how do Pokemon just suddenly become friendly to everyone? And just, like, stop randomly attacking trainers? Because we've been through, like, all the events of the main game. And, uh... by feeding them. I know, but like... Generations down the road. I guess that does kind of make sense in a way. Like that experiment they did with monkeys, where they like put food on the ladder, but then they like sprayed them with a hose if they tried to get it. And they slowly started, like, adding new monkeys in and, like, switching them out with ones that were there. And they were basically teaching each other not to climb the ladder. Even after they stopped spraying with a hose. Because they were, like, they just knew for some reason not to let any monkeys climb up the, climb up the ladder. So it just became part of like that, that group of monkeys culture that you just don't climb ladders even if there is food up there. Oh, those Zubats just flew right up into space. Maybe it's like that, or like if you feed Pokemon enough, you know, since the, we know that Pokemon are actually really intelligent, they like communicate with each other somehow. Oh, people are are safe, even if they haven't themselves like interacted with people or anything before. Or maybe I'm overthinking things, I'm trying to like psychoanalyze Pokemon. Pokemon psychologists are uh, in high demand these days. It's a strange job, but someone's got to do it.
Yeah. Tell me, how does that make you feel? Oh. We'll get there eventually. Be getting pretty close to uh, filling out the Pokedex entries for Landorus and Thunderous. Thunderous. I haven't used extra sensory on Thunderous hardly at all. Yeah. I don't know why I see electric type, I'm like, all you shall know is electric type moves and maybe bite or crunch. Shiny Apom, congratulations. Yeah, I feel like I'm really happy though they put more emphasis on like Gen 2 Pokemon in this game. There's a lot of really underrated Pokemon I think from like the first like like second and third generation that just you know they never put in for some reason. They'd rather just do first gen and previous gen. Yeah, Hoot Hoot. I'm surprised to not see him here. I guess, uh... They put Rowlet, but I don't, I don't like Rowlet as much. Yeah, Hoot Hoot. I'm glad that they actually, like, gave Stantler an evolution. Like, before the whole Arceus thing, if you told me that there's gonna be a new open world Pokemon game and Stantler's gonna have an evolution, I probably wouldn't have believed you. That'd be like if Delibird got an ev evolution. Possible, but you wouldn't expect it. I, I, I'm assuming Eevee. I mean, that's kind of in the name, Eevee Lucian. So that's what, like eight different Pokemon. I mean, it's easy to overlook them. I mean, it's like... 
I guess the, I guess the real question is who has the most evolutions besides uh, the Pokemon who is evolution themed. Six in itself. Jolteon, Vaporeon, Flareon, Umbreon, Espeon, Glaceon, Leafeon, Sylveon. I'm, I'm counting eight here. There might be nine after this next next game. I I strongly suspect, just from what I've been hearing, that they're gonna probably add another type to the game. And considering there's... Yeah, I bet you overlooked Glaceon and Leafeon. Because... I don't know. One of the pairs. Um, I'm going to turn this into the professor and see how we're uh, doing research-wise. But yeah, there's like a strong chance because they put an Eevee in the, I guess, the current anime. Or at least that's what I've heard from a friend. Uh, they're probably going to evolve into something unique. And that would mean another type. Or who knows, maybe they're going to start doing, uh, like, physical types, evolutions. Which, that'd be really weird if they did that. I mean, some of them would be cool. Like, I'm sure dragon type and poison type evolutions would be cool. But at the same time, what is, like, bug-type Eevee going to look like? How are we doing in terms of these clouds with the cloud knowledge? Oh, they're all complete now. Oh, now I'm torn. Because it's like, I want to stay because I want to get that time rift, but at the same time I want to turn in the cloud quest. Arceus just uh, getting bored waiting for us up there. Why did it just suddenly... Okay. Even though I slid down that rock probably faster than gravity should allow, uh, we still caught ourselves there. I guess I'll pick up these satchels while we're here. And hope that time breaks itself and not our legs. I guess it figures they had to do at least one Pokemon that you can only catch from the Time Rifts. I'm kind of glad they didn't do more. I don't know if I've even seen a Time Rift in this area yet. Maybe I have.
I'm just really hoping that the first time rift we see here is going to have, like, Cranitos, like, right there. You just scoop them up, evolve them into the uh, next one. And it won't take, like, seven hours to do. I think that was the last of the satchels that was here. I wonder if there's something the game's looking out for to determine, like, if you've been in an area long enough for it to make a time rift appear. Well, I could probably put treasure on the bear. I really wish I'd known that I was going to need this later. I don't think there's any more, like, side quests for this area. Definitely could be wrong about that. Yeah, apparently the weird poem fragments that you, found, that you find are literally just there for lore reasons. They're not, like, part of a quest or anything. It kind of feels like some place you could find an unknown hidden. It's kind of weird that they didn't reuse these arenas for something else after you beat the Pokemon that are there. Do you like a do you like a rematch or like you know maybe have other Pokemon that just randomly get you know, supersized by, like, lightning. Maybe that's, like, another way of catching alpha Pokemon. Or... I don't know. I probably would have done something with that. I'm gonna look it up just for time's sake. 
Because I'm like worried that there's like an easy way to make the time rips appear and I just don't know it. Um, actually, I'm not going to pause, so maybe I'll... Yeah. Time will work its magic there. How to get time rips to appear? Arceus. Oh, that guy just spawned right back in. Right on. They didn't even like slowly phase in, it's just like suddenly there's an Electabuzz there. Okay, there's an internal check every five minutes. Similar to the Sun and Moon's wormhole mechanic. I did not play Sun and Moon. There's a lot of mystery surrounding how the rifts work. You have to beat Mission 7 first. Not be forced. There's no way to force a, a, a thing. But they are decided when you enter the area or reset the state of where the last distortion ends. You're battling a Pokemon or being in menu will pause the timer. Getting a distortion spawn right away is so low. It's far more consistent to just wait on the map. Interestingly. Okay, so I should probably just be flying up in the air right now. Just so I don't enter any battles. Because that apparently pauses the timer. Put in your map. We'll do an internal check every five minutes, which has a chance to spawn a space-time distortion. Okay. Kind of what I was afraid of, but also good to know for sure. You can't make a, a time rift appear, but the game does an internal check every five minutes, which resets. But the timer on that resets if you travel, like if you fast travel, or go back to the village. Kind of surprising I didn't see more of them when I was looking for wisps the other day. So I guess the best thing to do would just be, like, collect resources. I don't think that'll stop the timer. Just double-checking that there wasn't one forming. I just, like, missed it or something. Not a big fan of mechanics that you literally just have to wait for.
course, uh, the game was not built around uh, the idea of people streaming the game. Still, I don't think people just playing the game normally, like, does anyone actually think like a mechanic like that where you just have to like wait an amount of real world time for something to possibly happen on RNG? I, I don't think that's ever fun, necessarily. That's going to start a battle. That's fine, that just pauses it. So, get the heck out of there. It kind of makes sense why I felt like just like farming resources when I, when I usually find the time rip things. So it is like when you're not, you know. doing. Pokemon battles or like jumping around too much. going to engage in a frantic resource collecting montage. Man, if you're trying to speedrun this game, that, that could be potentially a run killer if you just get really unlucky with the time rifts. Avoid all of the Pokemon. Oh, there's something living in there. Leave it be. I wonder if you have to go into an area or leave it to reset, like when satchels appear. Because I could be farming merit points. Why does the game let me go up here? Just like the world's smallest little tiny ledge. And then an invisible wall. Just gonna slowly farm experience to get this Sligu to become Gudra just from collecting resources.
But yeah, I guess it's unavoidable that, like, uh... Probably, like, this stream or next stream, depending on how how soon we can get Arceus. Probably gonna be, like, the last one for this game. Which means I need to figure out what I'm gonna be doing next. I've said it before a couple of times, I'm probably gonna go with Elden Ring. I think that'd be funny, because I've, like, never played, like, a... Like a regular PlayStation. Like, I've had a PSP before, but I never actually played, like, a regular PlayStation game before. This would be kind of, like, a fun... Kind of funny thing. Hit the ground running with, uh... Something as tough as, a Dark Souls game. Just, like, the first one right out the gate. I don't know, there's part of me that kind of liked the thought of playing the new Kirby game, but, I don't know. I feel like it's going to be... I don't know. I feel like it's one of those games that people are going to be talking about for like a week or two after it comes out. But then people like move on to something else. There's a lot of games that do that. But it seems like... It's, like, super popular, everyone's talking about it for, like, a, you know, two weeks after it comes out. And then it just kind of goes away. I mean, I guess there's more games out there now than ever. So... I'm not putting any more time in the day, so I guess people have to talk about stuff for less if they're going to get through them all. back in the day, you know, uh, you'd have, like, one big game come out every great once in a while, and then everybody would be playing that. I guess to a certain extent it's kind of like that still. Like, I remember when, like, World of Warcraft came out. It's just, like, people are almost using that as just, like, a... Like a, like a chat service or something, because the, the very idea of, you know, just talking to other people on the internet was a novelty in and of itself. So you'd have, like, like one big game that you'd have, like, all these different people who wanted to play for different reasons, and they'd all, like, basically get the reason that they're playing out of, like, the same game. So you'd have all these different types of people playing for different reasons, but they're all in the same game, because that's the big game that's out. Sony Bio desktop. Throwback.
some SNES games today. Nice. Which ones? I have a couple, like, uh, Super Nintendo cartridges. I have, like, a box in the other room. I guess that was the first video game I ever played was Super Mario All-Stars. For the Super Nintendo. Wow, that time rift is not opening. Okay, I don't think one five minute check is gonna make too much of a difference. So, I'm gonna go turn in the cloud quest and then come back. It's probably a neat idea to have all the clouds with me for this one. Donkey Kong 1 and 2? That's a really nice find. Super Street Fighter, Street Fighter 2. Super Mario RPG, that's another really good one. And the Jungle Book. Oh, I had that one. Oh, I still remember. There's like this thing you can do. I don't know if it's like the controller that you're using or if it's like the player 2 controller where if you like hold down one of the shoulder buttons you just kind of levitate in, in the jungle book for some reason. I, I don't know why they left that in if that was like an oversight or if that's just like yeah. You know, if it gets too hard just use this. a pretty nice collection to find. I don't know if I'm just like weird for thinking this, but there's part of me that wishes that they still kept making like Super Nintendo games or like GameCube games or other like older systems games. Five, nine, four, fifty-seven. Wait, I'm not supposed to be here yet. Like you see how like a lot of indie games are like going for like kind of an older sprite style like aesthetic anyway. So why not just go full like authentic and actually just make new cartridges for these systems if we're going to make indie games that look retro anyway. Oh, there's another mass outbreak. Massive mass outbreak. I think I've got to do that. I don't know what the, re the result of this quest is, but... I hope it isn't just like... There'll be like... Five different versions of this quest, where you get like three attempts at each area. And that's it. Gotta make sure I got the uh, inventory space here. Yeah, if people are gonna make uh, all these games that are like basically, you know, styled after retro systems. I 
I mean, yeah, I guess it would be it would be challenging if you were using the tools of the time to make games. Like, obviously, you're not going to be able to build a Unity game for the Super Nintendo. But I'm sure they can make better tools now. I guess maybe just the demand's not there. Yeah, seriously. Like, they used to be way better at programming things back in the day because they knew that they were only going to have, like, a little bit of storage space. So they would, like, constantly be reusing memory addresses, reusing art. Like in Mario, like like the, the first Mario game, how uh, the sound for going in a pipe and the sound for getting a one-up or getting a mushroom just like a regular mushroom. That, that sound is the same one. Where the clouds and like the shrubs are the same sprite, just colored, just recolored. Where they would like tile the sprites too, if there's like a really big sprite that they need to be able to change stuff. They would literally just swap out parts of one sprite. So they wouldn't have to load all of them in again, they could just load, like, one part of the sprite in. Um... Right. I'm gonna need to, uh... What am I doing? I need to get to crafting some Pokeballs, not capturing pictures. Craft all of those. Craft all of those. Make all the things. Alright. What's our best option here? Yeah, Super Mario All-Stars is great. It's weird because I never actually played uh, like the NES ones. I mean, the NES was a little bit before my time. Uh, but it's weird whenever I, I go back and see footage, I see people playing like the NES versions. And I'm like, because I'm used to seeing the sprites from the Super Nintendo version. the wrong way. Actually, while I'm here, I might as well try and get this one. What is this an outbreak of? It's weasels. And there's no shiny either. Yeah, we're on the clock now. Come on. I must be out of range now. Yeah, some pretty big differences. Because there's like a huge update with graphics. I mean, you're going from 8-bit to 16-bit. Okay, this is... The Zap Cats, so I don't care about them, because I already got Shiny Alpha Luxray. I wonder if you could even do it now, if you wanted to be like, okay, it's 2022, 
I'm going to come out with a brand new Super Nintendo game. I wonder if it's even, like, possible. Us. We get a shiny of those just from the normal quest. I don't know, that's kind of a really crazy thought when you think about like public domain. Like eventually all those design documents and stuff for how they made like the cartridges is just gonna be public knowledge at some point. I mean yeah, they'll reverse engineer it before that. So I guess you could have fan projects before that. But they wouldn't be able to, like, legally, you know, market it, something like that, and sell it. Eventually, though, Nintendo's copyright on, like, the Super Nintendo cartridges is going to expire. And then anyone could just make a Super Nintendo cartridge. Oh, is this going to be potentially Shiny Zoroa? SNES and NES clone consoles. Yeah, I don't know how... Like, the copyrights would work on, like, the actual devices themselves. Yeah, technically... Technically, an emulator isn't illegal. As long as it isn't using any, like, proprietary, like, firmware or something. I think technically the PS1 or PS2 has that issue. But I know a lot of, like, the Nintendo consoles. The emulators are perfectly fine. You just can't get the games for them. Without, uh, you know. Like a... I think you're allowed a... You're legally allowed a backup copy if you get it from a cartridge that you own. I think that's how it works. But yeah, the actual cartridges themselves, I don't know if you could actually produce one. Like, if you had the design documents, and you had the facilities, if you could just start printing, like, Super Nintendo cartridges or something. More Shinxes. Kind of unlucky with this mass outbreak. And this is Pikachu's. Still not the shiny one though, which means there's only one left, and that's. This isn't if this doesn't have any shinies, then I'm gonna go back to the Pikachu one, probably. And it's horses. I just realized if you wanted to farm out like a shiny Zoriwa, or Hisuian Zoriwa, I mean. You probably could. Uh, just not progress this quest so that they keep appearing in the same spot. Like on that one island.
big ol' Raichu. Well, he went fast. It's so strange that they added specifically Alolan Vulpix in this game. It'd be kind of cool if they added Alolan Raichu. Like the weird surfer Raichu. These guys are gonna... Whoop. Okay, get out of here before I get zapped to death by Pikachus. That's gonna be such a crazy time, though, like, in a hundred years or whatever. Like, when all the copyrights expire on, uh, like, all the Nintendo, Nintendo games. Like, basically all the games that are coming out now are going to be public domain. You'll be able to just play whatever games you want. Pokemon episode, there's a giant Pikachu. Pikachu has, has Dynamaxed. This isn't even his final form. I guess if they're gonna make a Pokemon giant, it's gonna be Pikachu. You might have just been watching the Thanksgiving Day Parade. Big Pikachu float. They've known about Dynamaxing since the 90s. It's just been top secret until uh, Sword and Shield came out. I'm kind of surprised none of these had a shiny in them. always goes for the one that's further away for some reason. Whatever I try and target. Might have been the last one. So I'm going to guess that you get maybe like three massive mass outbreaks per area. Good thing I recognized her.
they didn't put a quest marker, in, even though she was like right there. Is it always raining? That weird moment when your character notices something you don't. Reacting to the arrival of Mighty Palkia? No. Uh, Palkia's back in the village in the, in the pasture. course. We must seek wisdom where uh, you are most likely to find it. At the hairdresser. some extended Pikachu knowledge. I guess we'll keep uh, following this little story here, subplot. The mass outbreak arc. Wait, they just said someone came here from Johto? Probably not. They saw a mass outbreak of alphas in the Crimson Mirelands. Yeah, they're gonna keep doing uh, three outbreaks in each area. It's like, a, here's a better chance to grab some shinies really quick. So let me guess, uh, there's going to be three there.
I'm gonna turn in the cloud quest. I might just have to do like the fossil Pokemon off stream because I really don't want to subject people to seeing me literally just stand in one spot for who knows how long for them to actually show up. But wait, there's more. What's he doing here? Oh no! I just realized the mass outbreak is in the same spot that this guy's gonna be at. We're not gonna be able to avoid it. Wait, where'd they go? What's on the crimson? Shoot, it was right there. You want me to study a Pokemon? You have the Pokemon here. So instead of having me study the Pokemon, you have them go to a completely separate section of the, like. Why? Just don't understand. So, I guess we're going to do the gigantic outbreak of alpha Pokemon type quest. Wait, we have to go, go here with her. So it doesn't trigger unless we, we talked to uh, my... She's still back in the village. We're safe for now. Okay, I guess this guy's in Scarlet Bog. Let's say I have eponymous. There he is. This is a very weird Pokemon. See if we can, can't get him the stealthy way. Of course, that would require him to not see me instantly. A little stealth spray. I don't know what type he is. 
Let's see if I can get him into a battle. He's probably not ground type. So, should be able to use Luxray to hit him with the old Thunder Wave. Oh, that. Go, 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 go. Catch that battle. Not so lucky. And he flew off before I could throw a Pokemon out. gonna burn through all of these. Come on, fight him. What do you mean? I wouldn't say I'm particularly good at this. You probably do fine. It's gonna be really funny when I start playing like Dark Souls type games. Cause then it's like. Any illusions you have of me being uh, particularly good at this sort of thing? Fast. And there's, of course, there's Killer Hippopotami just guarding him. I'm just like, get on weird ears so I can like, chase after him. Okay, now. That's the hard part. It's just getting him into battle. I may have underestimated him. Give me the old zip tap. I see. We use the cloud to destroy the cloud. Oh, that might be a bad idea. We don't want to do too much damage. Oh, we want to do a little bit more than that, though. That's about perfect right there. They really made a Valentine's Day Pokemon. It's a little bit late for him.
We caught him anyway. Yeah, I don't know. That's that's one of the things too with me not having played a few of the more recent Pokemon games is I can't tell if a Pokemon's like new in this game or if it's just from a game I didn't play yet. But yeah, still, that's pretty huge, because that's like one of the last Pokedex entries we needed. Right, so that's the entry before Dialga. Trying to decide now. Yeah, I think we just gotta push now hard for the fossil Pokemon. Cause so it's two thirty eight. So those two would bring us up to two forty. Giratina would be 241, and Arceus himself would be 242. That's a really weird uh, Pokemon. Oh, now we got the red stamps on all of the different regions. That was, I guess that was the last one we needed for Crimson Mirelands. Oh man, I don't know how we're going to go about doing the whole... Uh, fossil guys thing though. Because if it's really going to boil down to me waiting in one spot in, uh, in the Cornet Highlands. Man, that would be boring to watch. Let's turn in this this quest really quick though. If we can. Oh, of course. Needs full Pokedex entry, I should have assumed. Okay, maybe we can do that while we're waiting for the stuff to spawn in. see here this one's fairy and flying so I can probably get where the uh, plane flying one that's such a weird inclusion It's like, oh, whenever I think of, especially Landorus, I think of like competitive Pokemon, but this is a game that's more about collecting than it is about battling. Okay, 
kill it same for like towards the middle of the map. Kind of get out here in the wilderness. I'm assuming it's the same setup where we need a certain amount of agile moves, a certain number of strong style moves, and extra sensory. And then whatever move has Storm in the title. Don't know why that's super effective. Maybe we'll have a little bit be better luck this time with uh, getting time to uh, time rips to form. The game forgets I can just do that. Now he's not asleep anymore. Congratulations. I hope he's asleep again. Not anymore, he isn't. Okay, you want to focus on agile style moves and extra sensory. Honestly, you could probably uh, go to the professor now. One HP. Right. Oh, I'm just realizing I'm probably going to want a whole bunch more forest stores before we go after Giratina. Which means we're going to need more resources, which means I should probably farm those if we're going to be stuck waiting for time to stop working correctly. Maybe I'll go ahead and actually take care of this since I'm pretty sure we've got enough research points. I 
I really ought to have been multitasking it whenever I was here. I don't know if I've even seen a Crinidos this entire game. There's like part of me that's like, maybe I saw him once in like a time rift. And just like the significance of what I was seeing just didn't register at the time because I didn't know that that was the only way that you can get them. So I probably just up and left. Of course, now that means I'm going to be uh, spending a significant amount of time trying to find him again. Or like 10 points away from the next uh, star. Okay, we need to do literally anything. Fight this guy, I guess. Number defeated, 11 out of 12. Let's make that an even 12. Get that last 10 points, get us up to 9 stars. Perfect. Go back to the village, get our nine star stuff. Turn in the cloud guy quest. And then see if we can't get these fossils. I'm gonna get the ice stone just because it's kind of hard to find these here. Herself the second to last star. Rare candies. Oh, we didn't get any more crafting recipes. I guess we just don't get those anymore. I guess what's left for us to craft, I mean, I've already got recipes for everything. There's an Eevee outbreak. What if there's a shiny Eevee out there? I can't not go check that out. Don't do it. Darn it, why does gravity have to work when I don't want it to? I 
I've got some Eevees hiding out over here. Maybe I should like sneak up on them. Don't. Keeping an eye out for a shiny Eevee. Not ideal. I think you have to catch like a few of them to get the shiny to show up. Please don't see me, don't see me, don't see me. It would be quite upsetting if it was like... We see the shiny and then the shiny sees us and the shiny runs off and then the shiny is never seen again. Why did I throw a fruit at him? Oh, it's still spray wore off. Were they somehow not noticing me because of the stealth spray, even though it's like right in front of them? I guess that's the last of them. Well, it was still worth going because that could have been a shiny Eevee. I just get 10 of them. Right now we will turn in the uh, Strange Cloud Man Pokemon quest. Look what I brought. Oh, okay. That's what I was expecting. You get an item, and then the item changes their forms. Shows their true shape.
So, uh... Let's have a look at how that works. Transform all the clouds. I don't have the fourth one with me, but... So weird. It shows their true shapes. They actually were uh, kind of normal Pokemon shapes. But they were obscured by the clouds. He's got clouds on his, uh, shoes. What are those? Okay, I think I'll keep him on our team. Fighting steel, ground flying. Steel Dragon. Kind of good to have a fairy type, but I kind of want the type lotion back. got to think about uh, how we're going to take on Giratina. They're going to be tough. Some of those medicine plants are growing. So I have a feeling we're going to need them. Yeah, at this point, there's pretty much not much else to do other than. See if we can't get those fossil Pokemon to appear. I did not get all the unknown, but I don't think they count towards Arceus. There might be some unknown actually in that area. Yeah, I think as long as you have one unknown, that counts as the Pokedex entry. So I guess at this point we stay in this area until time starts getting a little weird. But yeah, let's see if there is some unknown I can find here. Wait, what? Oh, right.
I want a tail of Giratina. Because that's kind of what I want to do is have like Giratina be the last one we catch before Arceus. Caught. Let's see if we can't uh, figure out what these are. Look to the... Oh, it's so hard to read unknown letters. Pillars of Celest Celestica. Look to the look to the something. So that would be here. Look to the... Oh, ruined. I thought that first letter was, was a P for some reason. I didn't see the, the little line that makes it an R. Yeah. Didn't know you were going to learn another language today. Is that another one of those guys that's just standing there ominously waiting for us to come close? So they can attack while loudly ex exclaiming their plans to do so in the middle of the open? That's an interesting uh, strategy there. I think I'll just fly straight over. There's basically no reason to battle. So it's around these pillars somewhere up here. Which is weird because there's part of me that feels like didn't I didn't I see one somewhere like that before? But then again, there's like quite a few areas that fit that description in the game. I guess we gotta check all these surfaces. Somewhere in all this, there's an unknown. Now, if I was a game designer. The game designer for Pokemon. There's a lot of ruins here. There's a good chance that they probably just stuck it on the top of one of these. I 
then again, there's a lot of hiding spots, like, underneath. I should probably start up here first. Bottom set? Okay. Oh. When you know what you're looking for, it kind of just jumps right out at you, doesn't it? Got him. Hi. Hold on a second. I see what they did there. Okay, a lone tree in a pond. On the a lone tree on a pond in or in a pond in the I, I haven't oh grove oh that's a G I'm just like what the heck kind of letter is that supposed to look like I guess the V is pretty obvious though. Is there a grove here? No. So we'll, we'll come back to that one. A stony outcrop over pools of mud On a mighty mountain. This is a mountain. Where are pools of mud here? Oh. Above the ancient quarry? Stony outcrop. So it's stony outcrop somewhere over there. I actually like the whole unknown thing a lot better now that I know that that's there. If only the Wisp quest did something like that. Oh. I literally just see like an eye in the shadow. Got him. I mean, didn't even get attacked by that giant angry snail.
Yeah, I can definitely see how, how it'd be easy to miss that. Like, I just like happen to be looking in the right spot. But I, I would have to guess that it's this part, because this is the only like weirdly spiky part. So it's like your attention is drawn here. So it would either be on this side or like over here somewhere. If I had to guess. Then again, this is uh, Game Freak we're talking about. So, really, it could be anywhere. Let's see if we have any more that are here. A village gateway. Is there a village here? No. Okay, we'll hold that thought. A nook within a... I'm getting a lot better reading these just from this little bit of practice here. I always, like, struggled with the unknown letters, like, whenever they put, like, weird messages in unknown in places. A nook within a quarry. A nook within a quarry. We're right above a quarry. So I guess one's on the outside, one's hidden inside. Is that going to reset our timer, though, on... I really do need to, like, set, like, a timer or something so I can tell when the game's actually checking if it should spawn in a, uh, time rift. So it's in here somewhere. That's actually really good, because I was, like, worried that it'd be, like, somewhere you have to enter, and it, like, changes you to a different zone. Don't know why it wouldn't let me get back on the bird there. Okay, so... I'm guessing somewhere along one of these walls here. Somewhere. And first, we're going to deal with these because I'm going to die otherwise. They're going to make it impossible to search. So who dug the quarry then? Like if this is supposed to be like the ancient past. Zap all these potential threats really quick. I think we might be safe now. Okay, so we're gonna look for a giant eye sticking out of a rock crevice here somewhere.
Wait. Found him. Space-time distortion seems forming. He can stay there. We'll come back to him. He's not going anywhere. Okay, it's forming here. How is our inventory? Little bear, but uh, let's see what we can do. We've got false swipe and we've got thunder wave. Hopefully, that'll be enough. I don't know if they're going to be rock type, ground type, or combination of the both. Actually, that's a good question. If they are, what am I going to use instead? Oh, he's rock? Perfect. So, not going to take too much damage from electricity, but you can still Thunder Wave that. If he appears, fingers crossed. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm good on shield on. Shield on and Bastion on, I'm, I'm good. I just need Kranitos, and I think they evolve. So, they're evolved form. So, ideally, if I can just get one Kranitos, then we're golden. Which, again, really bizarre to me that's just like, I think this is literally the only Pokemon you can only get from Time Rifts. Okay. I guess our plan of action is going to be immediately use the stealth spray. Actually, can we craft anything really quick? More stealth spray? Spawned alone? Yeah, hopefully that happens here. This is like the last, like, kind of annoying challenge between us and being able to complete the entire Pokedex. Because that's them. Those two will bring us up to 240. Yeah, they're literally the only thing standing between us and it just being Giratina and Arceus himself. should organize my inventory really quick. I don't have many mud balls, but I do have snowballs. So if I need to stun one of them. 
Yeah, we got enough stuff we could throw at him. Any moment. It'll finish warming. There it goes. It's down from the bird. Okay. I don't even want to like pay too close of attention to the items because I'm like. I don't I don't care about those right now, I care about Pokemon. Not that one. Not either of those. Rowlet. Not even gonna waste the Pokeballs. Like I'm not gonna catch anything with Cranny those. Like move away from them? Will it cause more to spawn? Shield on. Uh, probably want to stealth spray actually, just to help us avoid detection. Take a comet shard. Three Drapions. Another Rowlet. Hopefully not the same relic. I don't know if there's like a limit to how many Pokemon can spawn in at once. Maybe it's better not to have the stealth spray. Maybe I want to aggro them. So it'll be easier to spot them. I shouldn't care about Eevee unless it's Alpha Eevee specifically. I hope that shield on it isn't just like the one uh, fossil Pokemon that shows up. Yeah, I know what he looks like. I'm just worried he's not going to show up at all. Okay, there's some new Pokemon. I'm like worried this is like the one fossil Pokemon and it's like waiting for this one to go away before it spawns in a new one. So just in case this is preventing the other one from showing up, let's go ahead and get rid of them. Okay, you can now spawn in another one, game. He wouldn't put him up here, would he? Oh, 
I saw a Sylveon for a second and it despawned. Well, we didn't die and we got some items. So I guess it's a five minute timer now and the game will decide if it wants to make another one appear. Yeah, there's part of me that's like wondering, okay, maybe for sure you get one or the other. And we just, uh, you know, it's like a 50-50 chance. I just happen to get the wrong side of the coin there. Yeah, I'm going to grab that unknown at least. Right where I left you. Oh, it won't. It wouldn't let me grab under the wall. Got him. Okay. Any more unknowns in this area? Where stones pile... Where stones pile high... Amid... Something bound. Oh, fog bound. The stones pile high around fog bound ruins. Is that here? There's there's more ruins here. Where stones pile high. Maybe. By the grave upon the cape. So that's in uh, Cobalt Coastlands. The Unusual. The unusual stone staring out across the snowfields. Okay. Not here. A withered tree on the Sprawling red swamp. What? Left eye atop the 
village. A time war time worn ship. I uh, I mean I that's all I need to read it. I know it's the coastlands, the one ship. Yeah. On a sand shore. A dead tree by the hot springs. Yeah, that's ice area too. Where things hang to dry. At living quarters. Yeah, I, I was having a hard time making out the Q. Like, how is that a Q? I, mean, I guess that's. It makes sense if that's what you're looking for, but... <laughs> yeah, I feel like I'm on like a game show or something. Like whenever someone's... Uh... Like on Wheel of Fortune or something when they're like trying to figure out what the clue is. I'd like to buy a vowel. <laughs> Oh no! Good thing that this hard concrete block was here to catch my fall. Solve this clue in 30 seconds, yeah. out of here. What happens if you lose the game show? Some things are better left unknown. I still don't think Psyduck looks that intimidating, even if it is Alpha Psyduck. It's still not going to stop me from running, though. So I'm pretty sure we got all the unknown here. I wonder what the odds are that the game actually decides to make a uh, time rift appear. I know it checks every five minutes. At least that's what, you know, I read online. Assuming that's true. I wonder if it's just like a 50-50 kind of thing, or if it's like a... One in three chance. That was very close.
Okay, I think maybe I'll just spend the rest of my time tracking down the unknown, and then I'll try and get those, uh... Maybe I'll get those fossil Pokemon off stream. Just because it's like, that's gonna just take forever. With lots of standing in one spot. Hey, nobody wanna see that. Yeah, that's probably the best course of action. And then I could have the boss of guy. I could evolve him. We could go fight Giratina next stream and then go after Arceus right after. So I guess in the meantime, it's Unknown Hunting. It's the name of the game. Or it would be. If it weren't already Pokemon Legends Arceus. So, am I to understand that there's an unknown hanging on a clothesline somewhere? Living quarters. They don't mean our living quarters, do they? There's just like an unknown that's been there this whole time. He's been outside of our window this entire time. Is it supposed to be like, I don't know, they're like some sort of like spy mission from Arceus or something just to keep an eye on us? Or just down from there. Kind of shocked at that, that he's he has been there. He's been there this whole time. Let's let's go to the uh, hot spring and forget about that one. Surely we can escape from the unknown there. Actually, there's some more Eevees here. There's still a part of me that's just like, I kind of want to see if I can get shiny Alpha Eevee.
I think if I did get a shiny Eevee, I'd probably use... I'd, I'd probably turn him into an Umbreon, just because they've got the best shiny. Shiny Sylveon's pretty cool as well. But let's be honest, Shiny Umbreon's probably the best, one of the best shiny designs out there. Came back to the same spot again. Catch all the Eevees. The stealth spray is not working anymore. have any trouble with hitting that 10 Pokemon caught thing. Oh. One of the Eevees wandered over here. Thought you could escape. Well, I guess you're right. Why am I not just fast traveling up here? and then miss the Eevees. They didn't specify which hot spring. I'm going to assume it's the popular one here. And not the secret hot spring with Lucario in it. It's like... Where was it? Like over here, maybe? There's like a secret hot spring. It doesn't seem like Unknown have any issues being around people, though. That's kind of a weird rock. the rest of the clue. A dead tree by the hot spring. All these trees seem fine to me. seeing any dead trees. Maybe they did mean the other hot spring. Oh, 
Okay, we'll check the other one. Over here. That's gonna be so funny if there's like a side quest specifically for finding all the unknown. And then we we take in there's like wait, how did you find them already? A secret Pokemon hot spring. Now there's a whole bunch of trees that fit the description. Having too much luck though, it seems. Probably back here. Ah, there he is. Of all the places he could be. Time-worn ships, that's the coastlands. Left eye atop the village. Okay, there's two big old villages here. I guess three, if you include like the Ginkgo Guild people. Maybe they're talking about the actual village. Like the, like the main one. And then by the eye, they mean like one of the statues? Maybe, I don't know. Look the tree. Sprawling red swamp, so not here. Unusual stone. Unusual stone staring out across the uh, snowlands, snowfields. So he said it was on a stone, did he? That really narrows it down. I mean, this is ice. This isn't a stone. Staring across the snow fields. Maybe that? It 
that's a little bit ambiguous. That's a pretty unusual stone. Ah, it is the unusual stone. So for reference, it's on this ledge here. Is it supposed to be like a statue or something? Space-time distortion is forming, but not in the right spot. Okay, that's another Cobalt Coastlands one. Fog Mound Ruins. I wait. Where stones pile amongst. Well, that's not the the temple's not in ruins. Pond in Grove. Village Gateway. A Village Gateway, not the Village Gateway. I don't think there's actually a good reason to be here right now. Even though there is a time rift thing. I guess we'll go see if we can't catch uh, Alpha Eevee from there. Since this is like one of the only places I've seen them appear. Normally, you'd be. I guess this is just a place where they appear wild.
Yeah, it's always worth getting these time rift things. I think there might be another, like, one or two unknown in the village. So I'm going to check that out after this. I wish Dialga could, like, make it so these just happen instantly. So I guess canonically it is Giratina's fault. If there's one thing this game does wrong, it's the amount of stuff that you just, like, the stuff that's intentionally time-consuming. I'm sure it will go any second. I wonder if it specifically takes like five minutes or something after one of these appears for it to finish. Like maybe the game checks, okay, if there aren't any time rifts, uh, here's a chance that you make a time rift. And then maybe the game waits like five minutes after that. It's like, okay, if there is a time rift, then activate it. Oh, music change. Does it mean it's gonna do the thing? I'm starting to get worried this thing isn't even going to actually activate. It 
to like know that I'm here? To like, I didn't hit the, co I didn't like collide with it correctly or something. Maybe. Finally went. Pokemon showing up. Grab all the items. Start us. Weirder is kind of the best for this. Like, most agile. See if I can't catch this Oshwat. Only one with Twin Falls? That's a good question. Doesn't... I know there's a lot of waterfalls near... Uh, around Coronet Highlands. Maybe it's one of those. I think Crimson Mirelands only has the one waterfall, so it's probably not that. There are a lot of caves here. Couple Pikachus. Caves are kind of scary? Yeah. I don't know if I'd ever want to do like spelunking or whatever it is, where people like go into caves in real life. I'd be too worried about like accidentally getting stuck somewhere. Like if other people want want to do that, uh, they can. But I'm not going. And what what do they think they're gonna find down there? It's gonna be a a dark hole in the ground. Congratulations. Hope you brought enough uh, batteries for your flashlight. To be fair, if there if I did find a Pokemon fossil in real life, that that would be that'd be worth it.
I don't need to catch that Eevee. I wonder if they could totally pull like a Jurassic Park if they found, uh, if they somehow found like a Pokemon fossil in real life. What a weird question. Uh, obviously, there'd be uh, bigger problems if if Pokemon were somehow real. Like, if they were just, like, regular animals, then yeah, that'd be fine, if Pokemon were real. But then they'd basically just be regular animals. Obviously, they're not gonna have, like, the superpowers. Okay, having successfully got a whole bunch of items from the uh, rift back there. I'm gonna head back to the village because I think there's at least one or two unknowns still there. Yeah, I think we got more than ten. Pretty neat getting a Glaceon out of there. I wish Glaceon were more competitively viable. Okay, so something about a gateway in the village. Can we actually go up there? I don't think so. It must be a different gateway. Probably this one, since this is the, this is the one that we can actually like walk through without it trying to teleport us somewhere. You've got to be kidding me. How long has he been up there? I must have gone through here a million times. The game's messing with us. It, it totally just added those Pokemon later on. Okay, something about an eye...
I'm gonna check the clue again. Bone tree. Clear stone snow. The left eye atop the village. This is pretty much the top of the village. Left eye. Is that like a random building or something then? Weird. I don't think we can go up there. Yeah, so did I. I was just like expecting like one of these magic harp to just have like a big old unknown eye on it this whole time and I didn't realize. Well, that's like the most obvious thing. What else would be considered like an eye? Atop the village. Doesn't mean like the letter I because they don't have normal alphabet letters here. Like, there's part of me that wants to think, oh, it's they're talking about like a, they're being metaphorical. It's like a window or something. Or like the letter I. But no, knowing them, it's probably a literal I. On like a statue or something. Weird, I don't know what this sh what the shrine's supposed to be for. I think I, I saw this at like the very beginning of the game. You have to buy charms. Sure you do. Uh I think we were we had the right idea about the magic harp. How how do I throw a Pokeball up there? I guess you need like a jet ball or something. on the back side of the ma magic harp.
Amazing. Can't even trust the fish on the ceiling. I think that was the last one for here. Tree. Sure. Ruins. That's like the one I'm like not sure about. In the grove. I'm assuming obsidian field lands. Grueling grove? Yeah, that's probably it. Almost got all the unknown. Gotta get all the unknown for the true, true, true ending. tree and a pond and a grove. So we're looking for a pond. Ah, that's got to be it. Giant hair cross. That is an awfully suspicious tree. Oh right, because you probably you couldn't get out here before unless you could swim. You're just stuck in the tree. D. E. The whole first row, only four unknowns left. I think there's at least a, at least a couple in the coastlands. Sure, it's coastlands. Meyerlands, Coastlands, somewhere with ruins, which could be either Meyerlands or uh, Cornet Highlands. So that'll probably be the last one. There's at least two in the Coastlands.
It's so weird, that feeling of going through a game, like, when you start it and you just, like, don't know anything about it. But, like, near the end, it's just, like, I feel like I know where everything is now. Even though it's, like, a big open world game. It was, it, like, especially weird with, like, games like, like this, or, like, Skyrim, where it's, like, just, like, a massive map, or Breath of the Wild. You get to that point where it just feels like, you know. It feels huge when you go into it. kind of end up getting used to it. Doesn't feel as big. I'm pretty sure it's over here. I, I don't mean that in a bad way. I'm just saying that it's like a Interesting how, like, your familiarity with a game will change, like, your perception of the game. Okay, so, ah. I kind of swear I looked all around here for an unknown before, too. Because I assumed there would be one here. And I somehow missed it. They just blend right in. Obviously, this other one's at the boat. Well, one of the boats. I'm guessing a big part of it was because obviously we couldn't fly or swim earlier. So there's a lot of stuff that we couldn't see yet. Even if we had access to those areas. Um, okay, if I was an unknown on a boat. Time worn ship. On a sandy shore. But they're both time worn ships on a sandy shore. That one looks more time worn. It's gonna be absolutely crazy if there's one like hiding in here because I've been through here so many times and you get like right up close to it. It'd be really hard for one to sneak past you in here.
Maybe it's the other one. It's not like up there, is it? Okay. I can tell I'm gonna have to get rid of them first. <laughs> I don't know why he just appeared on top of the boat. For strategic reasons. I guess. of this uh, sail post whatever the correct term is for it and then there were two Sprawling Red Swamp, Fogbound Ruins. Making it our mission to make these unknown a little less, uh, unknown. I don't even remember what their deal is. Like... I know that they've appeared in, like, uh... Pokemon movies before. I don't really know what the whole story is with the unknown. Why there's just like random flying letters. Wither tree, sprawling red swamp. I mean, that's... you could describe this whole area as a... Sprawling red swamp. It's probably in this area. It's the most, uh, sprawling part of the swamp. I see you. It's just hanging on there like a Christmas ornament. Been there this whole time. Okay, so there's two potential places for ruins. It's either going to be like where we got uh like here's some ruins where we got spear tomb 
or it's actually in the coordinate highlands. There's some ruins. Not a lot of fog. I wouldn't say these are fog bound ruins. See, fog bound ruins makes me think it's like. Uh, Corn and Highlands. Of course, this is the one room with a big unknown message here. Wagging. I don't have any notifications from Streamlabs. I'm going to check Twitch over here. I've got to keep a Twitch window open over here. Oh! Yeah, I think it's on your end. Not ruling out the possibility that it could be Streamlabs acting up again. I'm gonna try and switch the stream elements. I think I actually get like an overlay actually set up. Try and increase uh, production quality a little bit. I don't think it's here. Shrouded ruins. That might actually be it. Well, those fires just suddenly started. I guess Pokemon could only exist in a world that's like necessarily like magical. just random colorful wild animals that have all the magical powers. Is this this kind of feels like it could be fog-bound ruins. And it's called shrouded ruins, which makes me think that we're in the right spot. Where stones pile high. Oh, like one of these little stone pile things? This is kind of amid the ruins. I think we're really close to the right spot. Bird? <laughs> oh, I think I see it. There it is, the last unknown. Got him.
We caught them all. Yeah, this bird definitely gets a workout. I don't know how these ecosystems actually work. I guess the Braviary must just eat like infinite berries. Like a, a bird that size. No, it was in uh, Crimson Mirelands. It was actually up here in the Shrouded Ruins. Because there's actually a couple ruins around here as well as uh, Cornet uh, Highlands. Like, I'm pretty sure this is like right next to the area where you get Spirit Tomb. So I knew it was either here or the Highlands, because that's the only two places with ruins. Do a little inventory management here really quick. Because if you don't manage your inventory, your inventory will manage you. Probably want more stealth spray. Make a couple more of those. Probably going to wrap up the stream here pretty soon. Technically, always mean to stream till like, you know, for like four hours. But, uh, yeah, we caught every single unknown. This is a mis This is very, uh, interesting Pokemon box of all Eevees and unknown. Um, but yeah, I think this means that the next stream will probably, unless we have a really, we just take a really long time with Giratina and Arceus, uh, next stream is probably going to be the last stream of this game. I think I am going to go ahead and try and get at least the one fossil guy off stream, just because literally the only way for me to get it is by just literally waiting in place for time warps to appear. And that's just, you know... A little too boring to make people watch that. So then I could just like, uh, start the stream Monday with the Cranidos. We can evolve him to his evolved form, go after Giratina, go after Arceus, and that'll pretty much beat the game. Yeah, we're so close now. 
but I'm going to call it here. I really hope you guys enjoyed the stream today. We caught all the unknown. That's that's kind of funny. I didn't even intend to do that, and that just kind of happened. Uh, don't know why I threw that up just now. But yeah, hope you guys have a great weekend. I'll be back Monday, same time as usual. And... I think we might be beating Pokemon Legends Arceus next time. Have a good one.